Okay, in this section we'll be looking at higher powered polynomials, meaning like cubic and fourth power, fourth power called quartic equations, or maybe even fifth power, which are called quintic equations. So um, greater than two, okay, is what we're looking at. Okay, before we look at higher power polynomials, let's review what we know about linear equations and quadratic equations and uh, talking about uh, x-intercepts and so on. Well, a linear equation where the x is to the first power is going to be a line. And we talked about slope and certain things like that. But how many x-intercepts did a line have? Well, they had one x-intercept as long as you know there was an x in it, a y and an x, both to the first power. They had one x-intercept. There was no talk about vertex points on linear equations. Now, quadratic equations, they could have up to two x-intercepts. Like here's a quadratic that has no x-intercept. Here's this red one here that just hits the x-axis and has one x-intercept. And this uh, blue uh, uh, quadratic, which is a parabola, has, a, has two x-intercepts. So a quadratic could have up to two x-intercepts. So what about uh, higher degree equations, like cubic and so on? Well. It turns out that cubic equations, like this is an example of a cubic equation, can have up to three x-intercepts. And really the fundamental theorem of algebra is that the number of x-intercepts could be as high as the power on the equation. So if you have a quartic equation, which is a fourth power equation, it can have up to four x-intercepts. It won't have more than four. It could have less than four, but it will have at most four x-intercepts. And a quintic fifth power would have at most five x-intercepts. It could have less than that. Now a cubic equation is called an odd function because whatever side it starts on, if it starts positive, it's going to end up negative. Or if it starts negative, it's going to end up being positive. So a cubic or an odd power function always has, like a cubic or a quintic, it will always have at least one x-intercept. Now a quartic equation is called an even function, so it will, if it starts up high, it's going to end up high. If it starts low, then it ends low. Now those dips may go into the x-axis or they may not, but uh, uh, it could have no x-intercepts clear up to the power of the equation with even ones. Okay, now let's talk about vertex points a little bit. With linear equations, linear equations did not have vertex points. They were to the first power and they had zero vertex points. Quadratic equations were to the second power and they had a vertex point. It was either a minimum or a maximum. Now cubic equations, when we see one right here, they could have up to a minimum and a maximum. In fact, most of the ones we'll deal with will have both a minimum and a maximum, but they're a little different a couple ways. First of all, they don't necessarily have a minimum and a maximum compared to a quadratic, which definitely has a minimum or a maximum. All quadratics have either a minimum or a maximum, but a cubic may not have any of these. You have, may have a cubic that comes down and does not dip. It just comes down and kind of levels off and goes back down. So no min or no max. But it could have up to one minimum and one maximum. But here's the big difference. This is the minimum on this uh, uh, cubic, but it's different than a quadratic because on a quadratic, the graph never goes any lower than that minimum spot. Like on this quadratic right here, it never goes any lower than this. So this is called an absolute minimum on a quadratic. This, on the blue line, is called an absolute maximum on it. But on the cubic, let's go back to it, on the cubic, this is not an absolute minimum. This is called a local minimum because if we look at the graph over a certain range, well, it goes lower than that. Like as soon as we get over here, the graph is lower than what it is there. So that's called a local uh, minimum. Just like this is a local maximum, the graph goes higher than that over here. Now, we can't talk about, uh, at this point, we can't talk about absolute max or mens because the absolute max on a cubic equation is positive infinity and the absolute min on a cubic equation would be negative infinity. So what we do so we can so we can talk about absolute max and mens is we look at these functions within a restricted domain. Like for example, if I looked at this function, let's say from x values going from negative two out to let's say four, then I would just be looking at this section of the graph from here to here. Now, the absolute minimum on this graph is this spot right here. It's like there's no other graph, no other part of this graph except this part that goes from here to here. So the absolute minimum would be here. The absolute maximum would be here. If we looked at this graph, let's say on the whole range that it's going to, it is showing right now on the graph, let's say from about negative three out to about seven. Well, then the absolute maximum on this graph is here because this spot on this in this domain, going from negative three to seven, that's the restricted domain on this problem, 
Well, here this spot is higher than the local max, and this spot is lower than the local min. So this is the uh, absolute max, and this is the absolute min. So what we have to do is we have to look at these. We have to find the local min and local maxes, find the uh, endpoints of the domain, how high and low they are, and then take a look at them and see which one's the lowest and the highest. Now, it sounds really confusing, but when we get to this um, cubic sheet, we get to this cubic sheet like I'm at right now, and you may have to hunt around to find the cubic sheet, but here's a cubic sheet. I just have some coefficients in here, but the problem isn't important. The, the point I'm showing you is that it's not as bad as you may think because you put your endpoints of your domain that's given in here, your lower and upper value of your domain. This is automatically calculated in here, your local min and max, and so is your absolute max of min within that restricted domain. Now, I have this graph, this particular problem, graph from negative 20 to 20, and you can see that that's beyond the range of this domain. It goes from 4 to 20, but I'm looking at the big picture of this graph for right now. Now, I'm going to shrink it in a second to go from 4 to 20, but looking at this graph from negative 20 to 20, you can see it looks like a cubic that has a a max, well, a high spot comes down, has a min right here, and then a max, and then goes on down. Now, What's the highest spot on here? Well, this is the highest spot, and this is the lowest spot. But if we're looking at this over this domain from 4 to 20, then I have to change my start in my graph to be from 4 to 20. And my highest spot is already calculated anyway. My highest spot is this high, and it's at this x value. My lowest spot is this low, and it's at this x value right here. And so now we're just looking at that graph within that restricted domain. And so looking at that region of that restricted domain, we can see, well, here's my highest spot right here, and that's is at that 10 point something on X and 6,000 or so high, and here's my lowest spot down here. So, you know, you can confirm those answers that we're getting over here on the graph. So we'll do a problem on the next video.